what uh, I write in the post David Kirillov was forwarding uh, is that I think of violence as being a non-linear dynamic uh, phenomenon. And that means we actually don't know what's going to happen once you're in it. Uh, the fact that there are some critical points in a non-linear dynamic doesn't mean that it is a linear process. And when I look then at how we train and teach self-defense nowadays, I see only linear systems. And that means first we teach and learn A, then B, C, and so on, and so on. But violence is not working like that. So we have a non-linear problem and we have a linear answer. And those two doesn't, they don't match. So in my opinion, it is very important that when you train or teach self-defense, it's important that you have look at violence in a non-linear way and also teach and train in a non-linear way. And what does that mean? So, teaching in a non-linear way, what does it mean? I, I will try to explain it uh, according to three points. Uh, the first one is attention. Most teachers uh, focus on uh, internal attention. That means you teach someone a technique and you ask, um, and try to feel this, try to feel that, uh, try to feel how you feel, and feel, 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 feel. Um, it's not the most effective way of teaching, especially not in a non-linear way. What seems to be more effective when you look at new insights in motor learning is uh, to put the focus externally. So the student knows that he is working towards a more effective movement because he sees that the effect is becoming better and better and better. So instead of focusing on what a student should feel, you should uh, put the focus on what the effect is of the movement the student is making. That's one. Die gaat hangen. Dus hij houdt zijn lichaam gespannen en naar voren. Dus uh, gooi ik hem terug. Ja, dan gooi ik hem terug. Ach, jij gaat geen boek dan moet ik hem ook doen. Zo, en hij gaat hier. Dus ik, nu moet ik hem hier vangen. Dan gooi ik hem weer naar voren. Oh. Gooi ik hem weer terug. Oh. Steeds op mijn vuist moet ik hem gooien. En ik moet er nu voor zorgen dat mijn hele structuur in staat is oh. om hem op te vangen. Dus ik vang hem op op de vuist. Ja, vijf lang. Point 2 is knowledge. And again, I'm not talking about martial arts. It's, it's good, you have to know all the movements. It's, it's like dance. And sometimes I think martial arts is more performing arts than martial, but that's my uh, point of view. Back to self-defense. When you say, I want to teach self-defense, or I want to learn self-defense, it's important that you uh, give a student the, the opportunity to learn implicitly. Why? Um, most learning processes, they focus totally on the external part. So the teacher is saying, first this, first that, first that, first that. First that. But it shows that when you need to apply that skill or knowledge in a stressful situation, it's not working anymore because your brain didn't got the chance to find its own path. And that is what we call implicit learning. So it's very simple, just develop exercise and, and let your students work in whatever way they want and let them find out their own way to solve the problem they have to deal with. <laughs> okay, stop. Last one, point three, is uh, uh, variability. Um, in, a, in a lot of martial arts classes, um, 
they teach in what we call the block method. So first we do a block punching and the next lesson we do a block of uh, defense techniques, uh, kicking techniques. And um, that also doesn't seem to be very effective when you look at a preparation on a non-linear problem. Uh, what seems to be much more effective is uh, to do it in a random way. So you teach all the stuff they need in one lesson. So uh, there is some punching, there is some throwing, there is some kicking, there is some what well, mention, but short, 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 and all in one lesson. So you ask of the student to find their own meaning in between, and every training you can do the same subjects but every time in a different perspective so in the first lesson you start with punching and then kicking and then this and that and the second lesson you start with uh, rolling and then to punching and then to uh, kicking then to joint locks so every time you change um, the way you, you put the next to each other and so that means variability the, the more variable you make your training the better it is so after David uh, uh, Kirillov posted uh, my, my little text, I received a lot of messages on what, non what I mean with non-linear and how it relates to teaching and training self-defense. I, I hope I was able to explain it a little bit. I apologize for my uh, bad English. I'm not a native uh, speaker. If you have any question, you can contact me directly. You can contact Valery Asnov or David Kirillov. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, again, I, I hope this uh, will lead to some insight and uh, don't hesitate to, to contact if there is some question. Thank you.